Hi viewers and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the learning Python from a free CAD perspective for beginners. Now we're on episode 11 and in the previous episode, episode 10, we looked at detecting faces that are in collision and coloring those individual faces rather than coloring the whole object. We already had that face coloring code that we did in a previous video and we blended in that with our main clash detection, our main collision detection. We learned how to detect, as well as a part object, a part design object, so a part design body. We looked at detecting those faces in there, whether they were in collision and coloring those faces. And that was slightly different to the part because we had to go off and find the last action, which is known as the tip and color that. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at removing the dependence on this piece of code here. Now the problem with this piece of code, it runs on the UI thread of the FreeCAD program itself. Now the reason why there's a problem is because our GUI is always looking for input from the user and is always processing our scene. So when we say the GUI, what we mean is the FreeCAD UI. So anything you do in the UI has effect on your macros because your macro runs on something called a thread that is shared with the user interface to FreeCAD. And that's a blocking process when you run a macro. So your macro will run and we'll go into this while loop. And if we didn't have this here, it will choke up the user interface. We've got a continuous while loop here and that's causing quite a lot of execution on that CPU. It's going around and around and around forever processing. We don't need it to continuously process like that. So it will be good to say every half a second, quarter of a second to process the objects on screen, check for clash detections and then carry on and wait another half a second, quarter of a second, etc., and then do the same rather than keep on carrying on and processing that all the time. We do that with something called a timer thread. It's quite simple to actually add this code in here. We don't have to modify any of this. It's just a modification around this area here. So I hope you're enjoying this mini series and let's have a look at the code. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So before we start, we're going to have a look at a timer loop. So I'm going to create a new macro. And this is just for demonstration purposes. And this is the code for a timer. So let's have a look what we've got here. So first of all, we're looking at importing the PySide library. Now, back in, I believe, episode two, we looked at input from user. And we looked at using the PySide library to actually allow us to pull in the Qt library, which we're also using here. We're using Qt core here. And we're just looking at queue dialogues then. This time we're using the Qt core part of the PySide library. And we'll be using the queue timer. We assign a timer up to the PySide Qt core Qt timer. And that variable is used down here. So we're just going to gloss over this part just for a second. When we have a timer, we have something called an event in there. And this is the timeout event. When we start that timer, we're starting it with a 10 millisecond interval there. So every 10 milliseconds, it will time out and it will start again. Now that timeout is a reset. So it will reset back to zero and start counting again. It's not a timer stop. It's just a timeout. When the timer times out, it emits an event. It emits a timeout event, which is this. It throws a message up in memory saying, I have timed out. And we can listen for those. It's called listening for event. And we can do something on that event. So it's like someone calling your name. When someone calls your name, you have an instant reaction to that. You turn around and look in that direction. This is the same kind of thing. It basically shouts out timeout. We look over there and run some code. Now that code we run is the update code here. And this is a function. Now we know how to define a function. We've done that before. 
And this is where the, the function lies here. Inside the function, we do something. So we either call another function or do some code in there. And that's pretty simple what we're doing in there. And if we go back to our main code, if we look at the while, we're just gonna do this process objects. So in here, we'll have process objects. And it's always handy to do something called an active document dot recompute. Sometimes you'll get free CAD in a situation where you've moved something or you've changed a parameter in there and it hasn't taken effect, but after a refresh, that effect will take place. And that's all that's doing. It's saying the active document, could you just refresh? And if there's anything that needs to be recomputed, then it will be recomputed in there and the screen will update. It's not a GUI update. It's just telling FreeCAD to recalculate anything that needs recalculating in there. And that's just the code. Very simple, very quick to implement. And what we'll do now is actually implement that into our code and see how it runs. So to do that, I'm gonna take the import pie side and the timer, and I'm gonna copy those. And we can come up to the top here. We're gonna still keep this one because we may use that in a future video. And I'm gonna come in here and do it as the very first thing to import the pie side and say the timer equals the pie side dot qt core dot qt timer. Now remember, we was talking about objects before, this is object based. So pie side, inside pie side, there's a qt core. And inside qt core, there's something called a qt timer. We're creating an instance of it here. So the variable timer, you can call this what you like, equals that. So that's that done. Now we need an update function. Now if we come down and have a look what we got, we got the process objects here, which is run here. Now we could just pass this in to our update function and add a bit of code on here to refresh the screen if we so desire. But I always prefer to do this as a separate function. So def update, open and close the brackets, colon, and in here we'll run the process objects. And also the freecad.activedocument.recompute. Now, just a little tip here. This document, we learned that FreeCAD is an API, the same as FreeCAD GUI. There is a shorthand to this, and that's app. So if we view our Python console, and just clear this. If we type in FreeCAD, we see that it's the module FreeCAD. So that's our FreeCAD API. We also got FreeCAD GUI, which is our FreeCAD GUI API. Now, if I type in app, you'll see that that is also the module FreeCAD built in, which is the same as FreeCAD. So this is another shorthand to the FreeCAD GUI. So if you want to supplement FreeCAD for app, then you can do so. The same with FreeCAD GUI. So that's the FreeCAD GUI module or the FreeCAD GUI API. If I type in GUI, you'll see that that's the FreeCAD GUI module. So where we've got app dot active document recompute, then that is also known as FreeCAD. So depending on what you want to use, you can use FreeCAD or app, or if you want to use the GUI, GUI or FreeCAD GUI, but it's totally up to you which way you want to use that. So if we come back to our code, so we've got this while here, and we've already got rid of the process objects. Now we don't need this FreeCAD GUI, update GUI here, so that can go. But we are left with this. So we need to deal with anything that changes in the comment to stop the program. So we need to stop that thread. The minute the thread stops, then the program stops because 
if the thread's still running in the background, still processed and weigh that timer, then the program will be still running. So we'll deal with that one in a minute. Let's go back to our macro. Now we need to add this piece of code here, which connects the timeout event to the update. So when that event is raised, we need to call a function on that event and we're calling in the update. So we need this line of code. And we're going to do that down here. So the last thing we're doing is we're setting the timeout event to connect to the update. So this here, the update function. Now let's deal with this. So this free cat active document comment, we need to stop the timer on that. So we can copy that or cut it. Let's get rid of our while because we don't need that. And I'm going to place it in the update. So the first thing we're going to do in here is say if and we're going to say document.comment and we're going to use the return early pattern. So we're going to say doesn't equal that blank string and then we're going to stop the timer. So timer and we've got a start. You can see it's dot start. So there's a dot stop, dot stop, open close bracket. So we stopped. And we're also going to add a return in here. So what will happen is it will come in, it will hit the update, come into the update, and it says if document.comment doesn't equal a blank string, so if there's something in there, it will stop the timer and it will return. It won't process any of this underneath. So the last thing we need to do is a timer.start on here. And I'm going to also run some code in here to say that freecad.console.print message timer running. And we're going to take that and copy it. And in here, tab in and we're going to say timer stopped that's view panels report view so we've got report view in there let's clear that out macros execute macro you can see the timer's running and if we go up to our macro replacement our actual document and place something in there you can see it says timer stopped and we've got some feedback on here saying that I've changed the comment in there and if I remove that comment you can see that the timer hasn't started running our code has completed after we place the comment in there and it's stopped so everything's good so let's increase this to every thousand millisecond now macro sq macro and you can see our timer is running a lot slower now every second so we've got total control over how fast this runs you can still come in and you can see if i click still running there so a second is enough click on the cube and click on the body click off and you can see that they're in collision. So you can see how much efficient that is. It's running it every second. It's not locking out that UI. And we have total control over this with just a few lines of extra code. So let's stop that macro now. And have a look at what we got. So we imported the PySide library. So we're importing the PySide library from there. And we set our timer variable, which can be what you like, to the PySide.QTCore.QTimer. And if we come down, we've created a new function called update. And in there, we've added some print messages in there just to show that it's working. We check to make sure that our comment doesn't equal 
blank. So open and close quotes there, it's just blank. This is the return early style because we're returning early rather than saying, does it equal something, then doing something, then putting an else in there and then returning. If the comment isn't blank, then we stop the timer and say the timer stopped and return out of this update. So this update will return out of here and it won't run this code here. If we come into the update and we don't have anything in the comment, then it will skip over this code and come down to the process objects. It will process those objects and then it does an active document dot recompute. So this process objects is just what we did before. So our while loop had that in there and then an update GUI. Because we're not affecting that GUI, we're not blocking the UI, we don't need to do what we did before, that update GUI. But we do do this for safety, which means that if we have anything that needs recomputing in there, it will recompute it. We can take this out and this will still work, but we just add that for a bit of safety. So that's all in our update function. Down here we have a timer.timeout and we've connected that up to the update function. What that will do is that when the timer runs out of time, so we've got past it a thousand milliseconds there, after a thousand milliseconds, it will raise an event to say, I've timed out, do I need to do anything? Because we've linked into that event, we've connected up that event to the update, it will run this each time. And then all we have to do is just start that timer. And that's that timer started off in the background and it's running every 1000 milliseconds, raising these events to update. If this took more than a thousand milliseconds to actually run, this timer wouldn't wait for it. This timer will still keep on going, raising those events. So those events will be queued up and just fire each time they're raised. So now we've explored the timer loop, we're gonna be looking at using that in animations. So we're gonna move away from clash detection and move on to our next chapter. So our next chapter is gonna revolve around animations and we're gonna be looking at controlling your model and the model movement in FreeCAD with the animations and timer loops and Python itself. So that is a beginner's tutorial again. We're gonna be starting with the very basics and anybody who's coming to it from the start without looking at this chapter, the one on clash detections, we'll still be able to get up and running because we'll be going into what the commands are, how they are used and how we can utilize those in our animations. So I hope you enjoyed that first chapter and please look back next week when we'll start on our next chapter of our journey. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.